when you're making any kind of electronics project, it's crucial to have a good power supply, one that's reliable and safe. So we're going to make a generic power supply right now. So we have this 3000 milliamp hour battery. It's a 3 amp hour 7.2 volt nickel metal hydride battery. And we want to connect it safely to our circuits. So I have a piece of clear Lexan right here. You can see it. And then we're going to attach the battery to it, probably with a Velcro. And then I'm going to drill some holes in the plastic and put some screws in there. And then the screws are going to serve as electrical contacts for these ring terminals. And we're going to use that to make a nice reliable power system. So first thing I did was is I got the mating connector to the, the battery right here. And it has the plastic piece and also the pins that make the electrical contacts. These pins plug into the... Uh, battery pins right there make contact and they have these little tabs on them right here so once you plug them in they don't come back out again and I want to make sure I plug it into the right side so the the red's positive and then so I'm going to plug it into the correct hole in the connector push it in it clicks won't come out again do the same thing for the ground wire or the negative thermal wire push it in makes a good connection. So now when I plug this in, it'll bring power out to these two ring terminals right here. So notice I also have a fuse. This is an inline fuse in here, and that's for protection, for safety, and also for protecting your circuits and your battery. So this one's particularly a 25 amp fuse. They come in all different sizes. And so these batteries, if they get short circuited, can catch on fire. So you wanna be safe, always have a fuse in there. You know, the fuse should be the first thing in the line. That way, if any problems arise, the fuse will get taken out instead of your things catching on fire. So I could put some lines on this piece of plastic for my battery terminals. And it turns out that a razor blade is actually a good way to mark plastic if you don't really care what the appearance is. This is for prototyping, so it's okay. So I put two marks on there. This is about two and a half inches wide. So I'm going to put one mark at about three quarters of an inch and the other one at one and three quarters of an inch over here, spaced an inch apart. Put my 11 64th drill bit, drill the holes. So I could drill right into the wood right here. That'll prevent it from cracking the plastic. So when you start seeing wood chips, you know you're through the plastic. And then I chose countersunk screws like this right here because when they go into the material, if they're countersunk, they'll sit flush with the bottom. So easier to explain with a picture. Put my countersinking tool into the chuck and then I partially countersink the holes. The holes are countersunk now, and now when I put the bolts in, you can see they sit flush to the surface, which is nice. And we're also going to want to put electrical tape over these to insulate them, because they're going to be high voltage. Well, maybe not really high, but they're going to be our power terminals, and we want to short circuit it. So put the two screws in, flip it over, and I'm going to attach these ring terminals on there. So one thing I also like to do, though, is you can imagine if I had my battery connected to these terminals, if this screwdriver crossed it, it would short circuit it. So you could put up a little barrier. Let's see if I could find where it went on the table. Here it is. So this little plastic L, which I cut out of this piece of J channel, which is part of molding for my house, using the tin snips right here, is going to serve to put up a wall between the two connectors that way nothing like a screwdriver or a you know loose wire can get across there so i put my drill bit back in and i spot the hole right there so we have our hole drilled push the plastic down on there and then I could connect the ring terminal over there, 
put on a nut. Do the same for the other side. Put on the nut, spin it down. And I chose long bolts, that way I could put a lot of ring terminals on here. I could attach a set of alligator clips you know, and still make everything connect properly. And the length really depends on what you have and in terms of how many pieces. Tighten the nuts down. I don't want to go too tight because it'll crack the plastic. So we have good tension there. Now, last thing I'd do, I don't have it handy right now, but I'd put some Velcro maybe on the battery and on the bottom of the plastic. And now when I make my connection, my voltage will appear at the terminals over here. So I could check that out real quick with the voltmeter. Throw in a fuse. So this particular fuse plugs in like that. It's an automotive fuse. Measure the voltage. We're getting zero. What's going on? So it turns out this fuse is actually burnt out. If you look really closely, which we might not be able to see here. Yeah, see, there's a little notch taken out of the piece of wire in the middle. So the fuse actually got fused. This one burnt out. Probably came out of some other project. So I got a new 25 amp fuse. It says 25 right on the face here. You might not be able to see it on the camera. So I'll plug the 25 amp fuse in, which is hopefully good. Measure my voltage. And I'm getting 7.8 volts. And notice the polarity is correct. So that's a good thing to check. It's not just the voltage, but the polarity. Like if I want my red wire coming off the uh, the breakout board to be the positive one, it's a good idea just to verify with your meter that you wired everything up correctly. And you can see I have my common in the black in the meter, and the positive is the red. So if I observe all the color conventions, I make the measurement and I'm getting 7.8 volts, things are good. So we just applied some Velcro down to our battery in our battery holder. So cleaned off the surfaces with a little bit of ISO beforehand just so that everything sticks. And then so now you can see the battery will stay nicely in place on the battery holder. So now I have a nice power supply, like I could use this for multiple projects. So the last thing I want to do is put some tape on the bottom of these screws, because just in case we wouldn't want this to touch a piece of metal and short out. You know, and it might even warrant two layers of tape. So we cut off a nice piece of electrical tape, put it down, cut it. Put another piece down on top of that just for some redundancy. And the wires on the top kind of tell the story of the, uh, the positive and the negative terminals. But same thing, maybe if I take it apart and, you know, mixed up a bunch of wires, I might want to label the top. You know, just put a little piece of red tape next to the positive terminal. You know, just because I can. Because everything that you could do to avoid a disaster is worth doing early on. And after all, I mean, this battery is called a venom. We don't want to get bit by that snake.